This morning we're looking at six verses of Nehemiah chapter 5. But let me start out by asking you a question. Do you think it's easier to handle success or failure? Now some of you are saying that you really don't know because you only had the privilege of handling one. Thomas Carlyle once said, for every 100 people who can handle adversity, there's only one who can handle prosperity. The fact is that most people can't handle being at the top. Success changes people, even destroys some people. So please take out the sermon notes that have been prepared for you. In the introduction, I've listed three advantages of leadership. Number one in your notes is position. That is, you can become more. A position enables you to become more. Number two is power. And power enables you to do more. And number three is privilege. So position to become more, power to do more, privilege to have more. These are legitimate benefits of leadership. The extra effort, the extra work that you put in. You get more position, more power, more privilege. But with each one of these also comes a great temptation. It can also become your downfall if you misuse it as a leader. Look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't, what? Fall. From the verses in Nehemiah 5, 14 and 19, we're going to look at three temptations of leadership. Is there temptation in leadership today? Yeah, daily in the newspaper, on television. We see leaders who have misused the position, the power, the privilege of their leadership. It's very timely. You have heard the old phrase, and you know it's power corrupts. Yeah, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that's so true. Nehemiah talks about temptations of leadership, and then he gives three ways to keep your integrity as a leader. Now this applies to you as individuals, as members of your family, in your home, at the place where you work, in your community, also in your church. This is very timely. So the background is that Nehemiah is now the governor of Judah. He tells us that he's been the governor for 12 years. So he identifies the fact that the governors before him, they were different because they misused their power. They misused their privilege. They misused their position. So these three become three great temptations of all leadership. Number one, when you are in a place of leadership, you will be tempted, first of all in your notes, to misuse your position. Yes, to misuse your position. And these former governors, they had made unrealistic demands. Look at Nehemiah 5, verse 15. Nehemiah writes, But the early governors placed a heavy burden on the people. They took 40 shekels from them, in addition to the food and the wine. In other words, in your notes, they overtaxed the people. They made unrealistic demands. They were unsympathetic to their situations. It was that they were in the middle of a famine. They were having tough times. But once these guys got into power, they simply abused their position. Have you ever seen anybody get a promotion at work and suddenly they become little dictators? Sure, it changes them. They were nice guys until get a promotion. They start treating everybody differently and make excessive demands on people. And in the church, these are the people who want a position. They want to be on a board, but in your notes, they do not want a ministry. Call me a servant, but don't ask me to serve. Don't expect me to do a ministry. Or the person who wants to be on a team, but who doesn't want to be a team, in your notes, a team player. You see, position on a team, at work, in your family, in church, it means in your notes that you are a team player. 
You listen to the coach. You want to please the owner. So the first temptation of leadership is that you will be tempted to misuse your position. The second temptation, number two, in your notes, to abuse your power. So you'll be tempted to misuse your position. Secondly, to abuse your power. Look at Nehemiah 5, verse 15 again. Their assistance also lorded over the people. Circle that phrase, lorded over. It was an oppressive leadership style. In fact, the servants, the assistants, they even were little dictators. How many of you would agree that there's a big difference between, in your notes, the difference between being a boss and being a leader? There is, isn't there? There's a difference between being a boss and being a leader. Because they were abusing the power. How many of you would like to work for a domineering leader? I think none of us do. Favorite phrase of a dominating, domineering leader is you do it because I say so. The point is this, the leader's law in your notes. Leadership is not lordship. Nehemiah in the Bible is teaching leadership is not lordship. That's the second great temptation. You're tempted to abuse your power. Number three in your notes. The third temptation is that you will be tempted to profit from your privileges. To profit from your privileges. Look at Nehemiah 5, 18. Each day one ox, six choice sheep, some poultry, were prepared for me, and every 10 days an abundant supply of wine of all kinds. In spite of all this, Nehemiah says, I never demanded the food allotted to the governor because the demands were heavy on these people. See, twice in that passage, Nehemiah uses the phrase, food allotted to the governor. Evidently, the governor had a right for food allowance that would become an unlimited expense account, too. The previous leaders, they were misusing it. Have you ever known anybody that would misuse an expense account? Sure. That's the temptation of leadership. In fact, American Express says in your in your notes. Membership has its what? Privileges. The world thinks membership has its perks. Membership has its privileges. You must be paid more, you have more benefits, more freedom with your schedule, and an expense account. And many people cannot handle that with integrity. In the church, membership does not mean that you have privileges or you have perks. Disciples in your notes. Disciples are called to service. The Bible teaches membership is about serving. Serving God, serving one another with our time, our talents, and our treasures. Many of the previous governors of Judah, they profited from their privileges. But look at Nehemiah 5.15. But out of reverence to God, I did not act like that. Nehemiah did not follow the expected worldly pattern of their leadership. The previous governors ripped the people off, but Nehemiah, he didn't rip anybody off. He said, I didn't take any money, I didn't make any money. How many politicians do you know who could pass that up? What's Nehemiah's secret? What kept Nehemiah from abusing the position, his power, his privileges? Well, in your notes, Nehemiah gives us three ways to keep your integrity as a leader. Number one, I will deepen my reverence for God. Yes, I will deepen my reverence for God. Look at Nehemiah 5.15. Out of reverence for God, he said, I did not act like that. Nehemiah wanted to please God on the back of your notes. I will please my God more than I will please myself. That means that I am not my own God. I reverence the true God. And that helps me to do, not to act like the other governors. Now, reverence. Reverence means two things. In your notes, number one, I must realize that, you see, God put me into this position. I realize that God put me into this position. Nehemiah never forgot that. It was God who sent him back to Jerusalem. God gave him that project. And the second thing that reverence means 
Number two in your notes. I must realize that God is holding me accountable. God is holding me accountable. Look at Hebrews 13, verse 17. The Bible says, Obey your spiritual leaders. Be willing to do what they'd say. For their work is to watch over your souls. And God will judge them on how well they do. So God gives position and God gives power. And here's the leader's law. There's no authority without accountability. It is the fear of the Lord. That's what it means to have reverence for God. And that's how you serve as a leader. I have deep reverence for God. Number two. So to keep your integrity as a leader, Nehemiah says, I will develop my love for people. Develop my love for people. Nehemiah is the real man of compassion. He's a man of concern. He genuinely cared for people. Look at Nehemiah 5, verse 17 and 18. Furthermore, 150 Jews and officials, they all ate at my table, as well as those who came to us from the surrounding nations. And each day, one ox, six choice sheep, some poultry were prepared for me. And every 10 days, an abundant supply of wine of all kinds. But in spite of all this, Nehemiah said, I never demanded the food allotted to the governor because the demands were heavy on these people. See, Nehemiah was very generous with his own grocery bill. Here's the leader's law in your notes. Losers, they focus on what they can get. Losers focus on what they can get. Leaders, in your notes, focus on what they can give. That's the motto that our Savior, he gave to us in his own life. Jesus focused on what he could give, not on what he could get. Jesus came to serve and not to be served. To give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus died on that cross, not for himself, but for you and for me. He gave, he forgives us all our sins. He turns us around through repentance and forgiveness. He compels us to seek, to give, rather than to get. Look at what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 2. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Paul loved people. In fact, those who abuse their power, their position, just don't love people. They don't reverence God. They don't love people. In your notes, as a leader, your personal serving, your personal serving of people shows your love for, of people. Your serving shows your love. Paul says, we gave even our own lives. That's the mark of a good leader. If you really love people, you're not going to abuse them. You will serve them. Do you remember how Nehemiah felt when he heard that his people were being exploited by the leaders? Did he say, I wasn't upset? No. He was very angry because he loved his people. So number one, you deepen your reverence for God. Number two, you develop a love for people. And in your notes, number three, there is a third way to keep your integrity as a leader. I will discipline myself for eternal rewards. I will discipline myself for eternal rewards. Look at Nehemiah 5, verse 19. Remember me with favor, O oh my God, for all I have done for these people. Why was Nehemiah not caught up in all the rat race that the other leaders were caught up in because he was not looking for the temporary. He was looking for the future. He was looking for the eternal. In other words, these people who were abusing their privileges just wanted to get rich, pad their own wealth and all. Politicians do that all the time today. But Nehemiah, Nehemiah disciplined himself. He reverenced the Lord. He had a deep love for people and he had his eyes on the future. So here's the leader's law. In your notes, losers, yes, losers focus on their rights, but leaders, leaders focus on their responsibility. The leader in the church says, I have my responsibilities as an officer, as a member of the board, and I give up my rights in order that I can serve others. I don't demand rights, don't demand privileges. I'm here to serve people. Do you think the wall would ever have been built around Jerusalem 
if Nehemiah got involved with the finances, making money, and a dozen other things, no way. But God gave him a job, a job to do, and he did it. When he served as a leader, God gives each of us also a job. Evangelism board, reach out to the unchurched, the unsaved. The elders are to reach out to the inactives. The trustees are to care for the church property. The board of Christian Day School to provide Christ-centered education. Leaders, they don't look at their rights or their position, but rather focus.